Big Boar Barbecue presents Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker. Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown and George and Gillette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. And by the D&D Diner. Good food, fine wine. On Theater Road in Sparta, next to the BP Truck Stop. Welcome in, folks, racing fans and those alike. Big Boar Barbecue presents Severus Racing KQEG TV. I am your congenial host here at Big Boar Barbecue on the north side, located right here at the beautiful corner of George Street on a gorgeous day to smell barbecue. And Billy Doc Niles and Paul Reichert, great day to talk racing. Oh, yeah, definitely a great day to talk racing. It's beautiful out when we tape this. Uh, and, you know, we had some great racing action last Saturday night at lacrosse. But, man, it's, uh, you know, like we talked about off camera, you'd have thought there was like four full moons. Uh, it just, it was just incredible. It, uh, them features just had a hard time getting off the ground on Saturday night. Well, we know Steve Carlson took uh, the first of double features on Saturday night at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. We're going to share the last two laps of round number two. And, well, Steve-O, it was Steve-O at top and Penitsky behind once it was, again. It was pretty much in cruise control for Steve on both features. I mean, he he was hooked up. He, sw he almost swept the night. He got second in the dash to Penitsky. But uh, as you see here, I mean, he's just he's just walking away from Paninski. Paninski uh, got into a he hit the brakes to avoid a tussle uh, towards one of those tussles at the beginning of the feature, the second feature. A little bit of damage as you see here as he's following him, but uh, still a great night for Paninski. You know, two second places is nothing to sneeze at. Brad Powell in the top three in the first feature. Mike Carlson in the top three. Feature number two. Let's flip over to the sportsman, Adam Oxborough. Well, we saw what happened here in the Frostbuster. Totally destroyed the front end of his car. Paul Reichert and uh, Steve Bachman. Well, it's going to be Steve Bachman. Expect him to run up front. But on this night, it was all Ox. Yeah, Adam uh, definitely got away from the field and pulled out to a good lead. But then uh, Bachman started closing in slowly and slowly. And it got to be a good battle there in the last few laps between them. And uh, Adam uh, held him off for the victory. You know, that's one of those guys, Adam Oxborough, that you can chase him all day long. It's just like Chris Weber with those two competing for a championship this year. That makes Bachman's turn at it a little bit harder. Yeah, it's going to be a lot harder with uh, Weber on the scene, and uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting, uh, even though we're just early in the season, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Big Board Barbecue presents Seven Rose Racing Me, brought to you by D&D Diner in Sparta, Epic Media and Vinyl, Back 40 Wraps, and Fanserena.com. Auto Value Thunderstocks were out. Matt Moore, who has a six-shooter, was allowed to put it in the uh, Thunderstocks. Billy Doc Niles, and uh, a very unfamiliar name because this thing's been owned by the Moore brothers for years. Yeah, uh, uh, it was, uh, who was that, the 69 car? Uh, he was Jordan driving, Myers. Jordan Myers, yeah, Jordan Myers. Yeah, I announced it all night. Jordan Myers, uh, he, you know, he had an awesome starting spot. Uh, a little bit of, once again, another accident takes out part of the front row, and he has... You know, he gets the jump at the beginning there, and he's off to cruising land there. This is Sunday cruise for him. Andy Moore driving the 29 car here tonight, as you see, had a great battle with uh, Charles Vianna. I mean, they went side by side for probably about five or six laps before Moore finally broke free. Best battle I saw all night. I mean, one of the cleanest battles you ever see on their quarter mile track. Never touch each other, ran each other clean. Was fun to watch and call. Well, obviously you both were there. I was DJing a very important wedding I uh, didn't get a chance to hit the races, but man, I'll tell you, for a night for me to miss, uh, I don't know how many oh here we goes I would have belted out from qualifying. Rob Christian almost smacking the wall for yeah, early on were, in the race. You and I were talking on the phone because uh, I needed some advice uh, during practice, and I went, "Oh no, Rob Christian just hit the wall." And uh, luckily for him, he was able to you know fix it and get back out to race that night. But lot of lot of accidents especially the five features it was just it was just incredible the first couple of laps on all five of them you, you just you just had trouble getting them going but once you did get going some really great racing well, let's kind of break that down late models uh, I understand Jesse Poxick uh, lost a motor Jeremy Wagner after a good qualifying of, uh, attempt lost a motor yeah. uh, Cole Howland they didn't know what was going on inside his ride. He yeah. started and parked twice, and that's not – I mean, you, Paul, you've been out there many, many times. Mm -hmm. Cole Holland does not start and park. No, he does not. There definitely was something going on there. They really couldn't figure out what was going on. And I, I think they had something similar to that last year or 
maybe they encounter something like that every year, but uh, it's just frustrating when you can't find the problem. Gosh darn it, where is the problem? How about the uh, the entire Eckelberg Racing Clan, Billy Doc Niles? Is, uh, oh, Don is going to stop and pay a visit to us here at oh, Big Four Barbecue. And, uh, oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. That's my play. You two are out of luck. That's going to be go time here in a minute. <laughs> the entire Eckelberg Racing Clan, Justin Mulliken, I watched it. We're going to show, as a matter of fact, the show it right now is in-car video from his wreck between turns three and four. And when he hits the wall, that front end just folded right up. Yeah, and uh, if you want to see uh, another view of it, go on to his Facebook page. He, has, he even has the rear camera view. Uh, it's uh, another incident that probably didn't need to happen going three wide. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Clements and, uh, and Mulliken took the brunt of this, and then it took other cars with him. Uh, Mulliken smashed the front of his car. Mandy Eckelberg on the first start of the Sportsman feature took a nosedive into the inside wall. And then uh, Jonathan, towards the, uh, I think it was towards the middle of the second feature, uh, there was a little tussle on the front stretch, and uh, he got his door dinged. You know, at first I thought maybe somebody like just somebody kicked it. It looked like somebody <laughs> kicked it a la Days of Thunder style because they didn't want everybody spoiled. They needed all three cars to work on, but it was a bad night for the Eckelberg Racing Team. Saw the brunt of the activity with um, with Nick Clements as well. Uh, he had a picture of his entire front end ripped off sitting on his uh, on his lawn. So going to be interesting to see this weekend at Lacrosse Speedway with just one late model feature and one sportsman feature. Who's actually going to be able to come back? Yeah, there was a lot of damage. You see, you've seen a lot of pictures on Facebook. Dan Troush had his whole front end off yeah, on, forgot Dan Troush. on Sunday. Uh, Ryan Brown was caught up in one of them. Up in turn three? Yep. It uh, it's it was just a very bad night for, for a lot of cars. Hopefully they can all make it back. And, uh, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot of work in the shops this week. Well, hopefully everyone's back this Saturday as we are expecting 91-degree temperatures. It's going to be hot. What's even going to be hotter? The concession stand. It's, oh, yeah. Buck night. night, yeah, yeah. Buck night, uh, two dollar, two dollar frosty adult beverages. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good night to be at the racetrack. Late models, sportsmen, thunderstocks, hornets, and the almighty queen bees are gonna be back out. I always like when the queen bees and the faster passers. Not yet, Bill. We're not done doing Leave this segment alone. here. He's talking in the mic, and I'm asking you a question. Queen bees should see a lot of them. Oh, definitely. Uh, we got confirmation Kim Eckleberg will be back this year. She uh, she had to miss last year because she had a medical procedure done. Didn't she won like the past two or three? Uh, she no, she didn't win it last year. You weren't there last year. I, I was subbing for you that night. Okay. But uh, she'll be in the Brandon Lemoyne car. That was confirmed on Saturday night. So she'll be in a top-notch ride this week. Queen B is always going to be interesting. Uh, I know Wendy Leaps, one of our guests' mom, is going to be back on the track. I think the last time you saw Wendy Leap's racing, she ended up on her lid coming into turn three and actually got a trophy with a car upside down on it. <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting to see how many do show up. I mean, we had a pretty good field last year, I think about eight or nine. Hopefully a couple more show up this year. They always put on an entertaining race. I mean, I do believe uh, Amy Eckelberg, Jonathan's wife, if I remember correctly last year, ended up on her lid. So uh, this uh, it's always an entertaining race. All right, we are uh, taping a show today at our main sponsor, Big Boar Barbecue. You can see we've got, oh, I can't even, it's going to take me a long time to even describe this because that's why I have the bib so I don't dribble on myself. <laughs> Coming up next, KQE GTV sponsors Matt Henderson. He had a pretty good run last weekend, and we're going to find out more about Matt and Jerry Beyer from Big Boar Barbecue next on Seven Rivers Racing. You don't have to fly to Kansas City. To get great barbecue. Four years in a row and counting. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Once again, La Crosse County has voted us the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Making great ribs and great barbecue has always been my passion, and it means a great deal to me that you love what we do. If you haven't tried our ribs, pulled pork, brisket, or smoked chicken, try it and you'll agree. Big Boar Barbecue, a delicious mouthful. Yeah! American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. Or the doggy door that just became a raccoon door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Call today for your free estimate on a new American Standard system or schedule online at carryheating.com. 
At the D&D Diner, you can expect hometown meals, hometown service, and hometown prices. Hi, this is Dale with the D&D Diner in Sparta. Your new home for great food, cold beer, and fine wines. Whether it's a big breakfast, a tasty lunch, or traditional dinner, you'll find it on our menu. Whether it's Friday night fish dinners, Saturday night prime rib, or our many daily specials, your place for great food at fantastic prices is the D&D Diner in Sparta. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Racing KQE GTV along with Billy Doc Niles. I'm Radio Man Dan Diker, joined by two of our most favorite people, one of them in the racing world and one of them in the cooking world to the left of me, which would be to your right would be NASCAR late model driver Matt Henderson. Man, how are you, sir? Good. I'm hungry. Good to be here. Why is it that every time we tip at Big Boar, you just happen to be here? I don't know. I guess I'm just that kind of guy. <laughs> I, I'm not complaining. Of course, KQE GTV sponsoring Matt Henderson and the number 33 uh, driveultra.org late model this year and Billy Doc Niles to the right of you the man who everybody loves when you talk about catering and barbecue that would be Mr. Jerry Byer. Jerry uh, who knows more about food you or Diker? Diker knows a little more about eating it than I do. <laughs> that would be a, quite the tandem right there if I were to work for Jerry Byer. Could you imagine that? Uh, Jerry couldn't afford to be in business if you had to work for him. Imagine him in size 57 pants. <laughs> tell you, Jerry, we look at this uh, this location you got here at the corner of George and Gillette, uh, and this is busy, man. How is, how is business going at, at this location right now? Business is great here. We love the North Siders. Uh, they've been treating us really well, and uh, it's, it's a lot of traffic, a lot of people from out of the area as well. It, it, it's working out real good for us. Is the future, what does the future hold? Are you going to stay at this uh, place? Are you going to build a permanent spot? Or are you just going to keep the uh, portable here for now? We're going to keep that kind of the close to the vest for a little bit yet, but uh, it'll be a portable all this year. You know, and, talking, uh, we'll have to see what the future brings. Talking about this being a clean driving corner, wasn't the same case at the Lacrosse Speedway last weekend. Um, you got into a couple of scrapes with your, your uh, primary car. Yeah, all in all, we can't complain. There's a lot of wrecked cars and... Uh, you know, we got roughed up down the left side of the car a little bit. Just some tire marks, but uh, nothing too major. So the car is uh, torn apart right now. Uh, we put all new brakes on during the winter, and this was our first race. And uh, our left front brake caliper, which was brand new, brand new caliper and rotor, uh, was hanging up. By the time we got in after that second feature, we couldn't even spin the tire. So Is, is that what the problem was, uh, that you started to go backwards? Well, because you looked like you were shot out of a cannon yeah. on that restart. Yeah, I couldn't believe how well we we actually did on that restart. I thought if I stay on the inside, we're probably going to get freight train on the outside by Steve and the 22. And I said if I go to the outside, that's my only shot, you know. So what the heck, we went for it and it stuck coming out of four, and I almost had him cleared going into one there and cleared him off of two. And between our split, our new tires totally screwed us up in the back they shrunk we had about two inches of split and that for people who don't know what split is it's just the difference in the sizes between the two tires and it shrunk up and that makes your car tight so between that shrinking over a half inch and the left front you know the rear of the car wants to go faster than the front when the brakes are on the entire race so between those two things it didn't help us but we had a lot of speed and i think it's something we can definitely build on and we're excited we're pumped up well, you come out and you qualify fourth right off the bat. You make the six for six dash, and you led darn near uh, quite a bit of that second feature. First race of the year, you've got to really feel like the, the notebook has kind of shrunk because of where you guys ended up night number one. Yeah, I mean, we're pumped. We're just excited to be competitive. That's all I, that's all I want. And a heck of a qualifying effort, too. Yeah. I don't care if we win. Obviously, everyone wants to win. I just want to be in the conversation, you know. When people are watching the races, you know, I want to be in the top five. I want to be competitive with the big dogs. And uh, based off the first night, I think we're definitely on the right track. Obviously, we still got more work to do. Steve is never going to slow down. So we all have our work cut out to catch up. But um, after the first night, we're pretty happy. You know, Billy Doc, talking about winning, Jerry Byer, congratulations. Uh, you've not been in this area that long, but yet you just nailed down your fourth best barbecue in La Crosse County and best caterer. Did you imagine you were going to be setting the bar that high for your big board barbecue the, the, in the short run like this? 
No, I don't think we imagined it, but we're, we're sure proud to be there. We're real happy the support we've gotten from the community, and uh, we're just going to keep doing our best to make it five in a row. Now, you, when you started, it was just this, uh, and you, if you see behind us, it's the port is his, his portable barbecue shack. When you started, it was just the portable barbecue shack in West Salem. Hot, things just progressed from there. Yeah, we figured we'd build a shack and we'd do it in the summer here and maybe go south in the winter and that didn't happen. And the next summer, uh, you know, it was, uh, we'd go to an event and people would be mad we weren't in the lot. So we bought another shack and uh, it just kept growing. You know, I got to tell you, when you, fir when you first put that up in West Salem and I drive by it and like, whoa, that's, that's new. And then people started telling me, oh yeah, you got to try it. It's great. And then I saw you at a couple events I went to and and I, I got to tell you, it's every chance I get, I get, I get to a big boar barbecue at one of the three locations out because this is by far the best barbecue I've ever had. And the only thing he doesn't have out here in this little spread is the coleslaw. Folks, if you like down home, have you had their coleslaw yet, Matt? I have not. Their mac and cheese is delicious. Bill likes the mac and cheese. The coleslaw is simply the best. And obviously, uh, Jerry, that's something that does set you apart from anybody else that wants to compete. The coleslaw, I think, is one of your niches, too, because it's not like what you're going to get in your local grocery store. No, it's quite a bit different than you'll find anywhere. It, it is a vinegar slaw, but it's it's sweet, and it's got some extra veggies in it, and uh, uh, we convert a few creamy people. Coleslaw is the thing that uh, there's pretty much two camps, and, and uh, we'll pull a few in from both. He converted me. I was a creamy coleslaw guy. Now I'm really vegging for some of his. Talking about converting, you're going to have to convert your primary car into a winner this coming Saturday night. When you are seeing what Steve Carlson is doing with a brand new car, Nick Panitsky trying to run for a second championship, they've raised the late model bar amongst about 30 of them this year. Your work, work, work compared to maybe years before is really cut off for your team this year. Yeah, I mean, it's cut out every year. I mean, Steve... He sets the bar every week, and a lot of people might complain, you know, you know, why doesn't he retire, and we're sick of seeing him win. Well, that's our bar that we go by every week, and I am happy as heck when he's at the track, because if we beat him, that makes it that much better to say, you know, you all ran Steve Carlson. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it is pretty cool. You know, talk about some more of the competition coming in now. Uh, let, you know, obviously Paninski's here every week. Gady pops in and out every now and then. Now Wilberg's, Bobby Wilberg. Wilberg's going to be popping in every now and then. The competition's just getting tougher. It is getting tougher, and that's, you know, we work our butts off to go as fast as we possibly can every week. And uh, you know us, everything from the race car to, you know, events, everything for us has to be perfect before we show up and hit the track. And uh, we're doing all we can to get out there and give them guys a run for their money. Even at Oktoberfest last year, they had to find the perfect DJ to DJ on top of their float. I think that was me. Uh, it I wasn't. I think it was pretty freaking awesome. I, I was right behind him. I did not see the perfect DJ. I saw you. <laughs> That's because Bill was one of those hiding his suds on the on the parade route. Jerry, really quick, real quickly here, we do, we're running out of time. Uh, first of all, tell everybody about your your uh, your three locations and where they can find this great food. Uh, we're right along Highway 16 in West Salem, right here on George Street and 3rd Street downtown, and we're just really happy to be part of this whole program. And one thing uh, I got to try last year for the first time, you've got an incredible breakfast menu. Yeah, breakfast is in West Salem only, but uh, all the favorites you're used to anywhere, but we add, uh, add some barbecue touches to it. You got your family, some of your racing family eating over here. Tom, what do you think? Is the barbecue good today? Is it good? Your wife can't answer because her mouth is full of it. We like to see that. Big Boar Barbecue here on the North Saddle Lacrosse. We're going to be back to talk street stocks next on Seven Rivers Racing. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Four years in a row and counting. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Once again, La Crosse County has voted us the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Making great ribs and great barbecue has always been my passion, and it means a great deal to me that you love what we do. If you haven't tried our ribs, pulled pork, brisket, or smoked chicken, try it and you'll agree. Big Boar Barbecue, a delicious mouthful. Yeah! American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. 
or the doggy door that just became a raccoony door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Call today for your free estimate on a new American Standard system or schedule online at carryheating.com. At the D&D Diner, you can expect hometown meals, hometown service, and hometown prices. Hi, this is Dale with the D&D Diner in Sparta. Your new home for great food, cold beer, and fine wines. Whether it's a big breakfast, a tasty lunch, or traditional dinner, you'll find it on our menu. Whether it's Friday night fish dinners, Saturday night prime rib, or our many daily specials, your place for great food at fantastic prices is the D&D Diner in Sparta. Welcome back, folks. Seven Wars Racing KQEG TV. Billy Doc Dallas and myself, Radio Man Dan Dyker, here on the North Side of Lacrosse at Big Boar Barbecue. Of course, they sponsor the program. Uh, we are very grateful. I was going to tell Jerry that, but he had to hurry back there because he's got a line of people he's trying to feed. That, that uh, we're very that gracious he's to have him. He's going to get all of our food together too. Yet he's going to go for a round too. Very gracious to just, have him. This is just the Dyker sampler platter. Very gracious to have him as a part of the program and part of the racing community. Two other guys that were glad are a part of the racing community came on the scene a couple of years ago in Hornet Cars. Uh, they've now gone into the street stock ranks and they have made a name for themselves. That would be uh, this guy right here, Alex Leach. And uh, Bill, ask Skyler how to pronounce his last name. Skyler, how do you pronounce your last name? It is Pozans. P O Z N A C. It's Skyler. <laughs> for those, I yeah, couldn't I even phonetically get sure. that right. Oh. Got Zach. Why is it that I can't get you and Alex? I can't get I you guys know. figured out. He was here last week. My goodness gracious. It's good to have you guys on, a part of the Networks Racing Team, and uh, now doing a phenomenal job on the Street Stocks class. And I'll tell you what, man, because of you guys, uh, you've made some really exciting racing and huge car counts in that Street Stock class. Yeah, we did. We, last week, I think we had 26 cars start the feature. And... It was a whole blast to run the whole thing with that many cars out there. Do you imagine when Street Stocks first started, you were going to see that many cars? No, uh, not with how I've seen some classes they started not progress like this. We just and had a drive-by by Reichert. He tried to get at the food. Did you stab him with a fork? He, his arms aren't long enough. He couldn't get to it. Oh, see what happens when we look away. Skyler, talk the same question to you. Talk about the competition of the, the Street Stock classes. Just has just grown and uh, it's it's top notch all the way from the front to the back. Yeah, I was uh, told this is my second week of driving a race car, and uh, from what I'm being told, is this class is getting is growing and it's getting wild. And these last two weeks have been just unbelievable, crazy wild. Uh, a lot of fast cars and a lot of good cars. So only two weeks. What's your impression so far? How you how you how you getting the hang of it? Uh, how's, how's things feeling to you? Um, the, my car has been all right. Um, these two weeks have been crazy. Been learning a lot, of course, and mostly trying to get the corners to work in my favor. But right now, they are not in my favor. What's it going to take to get it in your favor? A lot of adjustments, and hope that it swings your way. Seat time. And you know, having having someone like um, the Leapsch family that's helping them out. I mean, Wendy's been racing. Oh gosh, I don't know how long she raced. It was a long time in the Hornet class. She'll be back in the Queen Bees this weekend. But you guys are such a tight-knit family, and you've been doing this for so long that you bring a guy like Skyler on board. There is a lot of know-how and knowledge with what you guys know to give him. Yeah, we'll tell him all our tricks and stuff. Not all of them, so he's not faster than us, but we'll show him how to do stuff so he's just as quick. You're holding back your teammate? Oh, yeah. Can't so, let someone beat us. So how much knowledge <laughs> have, they, have they expounded on you? I've, I've learned a lot, and so far this last week, I've improved on a lot of tire pressures, and I'm hoping to apply that to my, my car this for this upcoming race. You know, talking about the rocking and rolling that was going on through all the divisions last weekend, I, I get on Facebook Monday morning, and I see the new truck that you brought out. A little bit of damage you received there. Yeah, we went, tried going four wide through corner one, and it just wasn't going to go, and everyone stacked up. You know, I, I noticed you kind of stopped by your brother there. Were you just checking to see how he's doing, or were you saying, why did we do that? <laughs> I was making sure he was good, and then my truck all of a sudden died, but I got that going again. What is it about the pickup trucks? Uh, Michael Heyer driving a pickup truck. You guys have had two of them in your stables now. What is it about the pickup trucks that are maybe a little bit better than the, the Grand Prix and, and some of the Chrysler's we see? There's not much difference. The only thing is they're real-world drive. They're just a whole lot more fun to tackle of 
getting around the track. You know, one of the things I always ask our street stock guys, affordability. I don't know how many of you guys, we were talking just the other day, you're finding these cars in junkyards for $150, $200, and next week you're racing them. Yeah, they don't take much to get them going. Find one on the internet for a couple hundred bucks, tear it apart, and just go. Well, Skyler, uh, I was going to ask you, uh, obviously, you know, it's just a couple of weeks, what got you into racing, and how'd you get hooked up with this with this race team? Well, I always dreamed on racing for quite a few years, but um, hire just happened best with my brother, and he and ask him if he wanted to race, but because I heard about it, I told him, like, no, I'm going to hop in the car, and that's how it all went. And Hire, he's been a great friend with me and my brother, and I'm glad to continue doing this. I think we're going to have Michael on the program uh, next weekend. Yeah, he was running really well for a while, and I think he got caught up in one of those little scrapes Saturday night. Yeah, he um, was behind us and had nowhere to go behind us and got a tire cut down, so that ended his night early. You know, one thing I really appreciate with the street stock guys is the uniformity they have. Uh, the first couple of years, they were filling, they were filling the class out, they were filling the cars out. Now they're coming out like this guy's are black, and and he's got the kind of the diagonal thing going on with the zero six, and and you got the black, and you've got the red, and of course they've got the uniforms to match that. You guys have really taken a nice job of taking care of that class to get it where it is now. Yeah, we take pride in our cars. We see them as late, like late models. We. That's what we can afford, so why wreck them and tear them apart if we can't afford to fix them weekly? Yeah, that's a fantastic answer, Billy Doc Niles. If you look at it, not everybody can afford a late model. Not everybody can afford a sportsman. They are a part of the show, though. Just like the Hornets we get in the program, they are a part of the show. I think uh, the, he said that he hit the nail right on the head there, taking pride in, in their vehicle, uh, just like the late model guys do, just like the sportsman guys do. And uh, I, when you get there Saturday, you're going to see uh, some of the pride or, or when they race again. A lot of these guys' uh, cars look a lot different than the first week. and uh, I saw Cheetos on Facebook was Cheeto stepped up a little bit. Cheetos was stepped up a little bit. Uh, um, Smalls was stepped up a little bit. Uh, these guys, once he gets the black and red on his, his will be stepped up a little bit. We're not going black and red with the trucks. We're not going black no, and red? The trucks we're doing, military-themed trucks. Oh, sweet. Very nice, very nice. Hey, we're running into time of the segment, and we want you to get some need as well. Tell us about your sponsors that are helping you and your entire race team here in 2018. I have Paisley's Purpose, Roy and Dad Sackleden, Grandma and Grandpa, Pizza Hut of Decora, um, CB Shop, and I think that's just about it I have. Always got to have a food sponsor. Tyler, who you got sponsoring you this year? Well, as of right now, I'm still searching for my first sponsor, but I've been asking around the areas for, for, for one. So if anybody's watching right now, this gentleman okay, needs, Paul, needs a name on the side of his car, and you know, he's, he's young, and he's willing to learn, and he's ready to learn, and he just needs a little bit of help. All right, Paul, you can go ahead, Paul. You may have some here. He's been trying to just give him the, he's just been trying the, the entire segment to get over my shoulder, and I kept smacking his hand because he likes the mac and cheese. This, by the way, is the fantastic coleslaw that I was talking about earlier. This is simply, there is no other coleslaw, seriously, in the cross you're going to find that tastes as good as that. I want to thank Excuse me, what, Donna, Donna made it. So when you stop by Big Bar Barbecue at any of the three locations, say you want the Donna Slaw, period. They'll know exactly what you're talking about. We do want to thank uh, Jerry Byer and Donna for uh, the sponsoring the program again this year and the radio program. Uh, love this, uh, this facility they have here. I usually go to the one downtown because my wife and I like to cozy up downtown a little bit. Uh, we'd invite you to stop by all three. This one here on the north side is alive. It's kicking. It's open. And it smells wonderful. It's delicious. Uh, you see, we've already tore through the Diker uh, the Diker appetizer platter. As soon as that tape goes off, we're hitting the main event. We're going to reload. want to thank Leipsch. And that in Posnance. Posance. Posance. Skyler. Matt, Matt Henderson and the buyers for having us in the program. Jesse's running the camera. Rick's standing over there and they're hungry as well. You've been watching Big Boar Barbecue presents Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. You've been watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker. Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown and George and Gillette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. And by the D&D Diner, good food, fine wine, on Theater Road in Sparta, next to the B Peak Drug Stop. Thanks for watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG-TV.
You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Big Boar Barbecue is up and running on the north side of La Crosse. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Yes, the food truck is open at George and Gillette Street to make it easier for you north siders to find out why La Crosse County has voted us four years in a row as the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, 3rd Street downtown, and now open at George and Gillette Street. <laughs> 